we have a no crank, no start on this 2004 Cadillac Escalade. So let's dig in and see what we can find. Just to confirm, uh, we're gonna go ahead and try and crank it over. And we don't get anything. Now that flickering of the light, um, that's just the phone's refresh rate, so that's not an issue. Also up in the corner, the security light, it does go out, so I don't think we're dealing with uh, any kind of anti-theft uh, issue or anything like that. I went ahead and just did a full uh, health or system scan. It looks like we have some communication uh, issues with electronic brake control module, uh, loss of RTD communication, not sure what that is, so I'll have to look that up. State of health from module, that's passenger system, rear auxiliary climate control, so I'm not too worried about those. Uh, let me look up what that uh, 1056 is. So from what I can tell, this U1056 is for the electronic suspension uh, control module. So I think we're done inside the vehicle for now. Let's go under the hood. We'll keep these codes in the back of our minds, but let's go under the hood, um, open up the fuse box. This is the fuse box on the driver's side. Uh, and if you look, we have the starter there is this here. So what we can do is just swap, swap relays, see if that does anything. But that's quick and simple to do, just swap a relay. So let's do that, see what happens. Okay, so we swapped relays, uh, nothing happened, and then thinking, well, maybe we got two bad relays, so I swapped it even with the third one, uh, and still nothing. So, what do you do from here? Well, because we have easy access to the starter relay, let's see if we have uh, control from the, uh, from the ignition switch. So when you look at the relay, it looks like 86 and 85 are the control, and that control turns on the switch to complete the circuit of 30 to 87. Then we just turn it over, and we can see where 30 is here and 87. So this uh, 85 and 86 are the controls, and then 87 and 30 are what turns on uh, to start the starter. How that translates uh, to here is that's 30, and then diagonally is 87. Okay, so this is 30. I'm hooked up to battery um, negative and I have power. This is 85. Again, hooked up to battery positive and we have power. So we have both our powers uh, coming into here. So now let's see if we have our control side. Now control side should be uh, a ground. So, according to here, we did 30 and 85. So, 86, we move this over to 86. This over to battery positive. Now when I crank, uh, we should be getting that light. If the ignition, if the ignition switch is sending uh, its signal or grounding, really is what it's doing, um, this light should light up. Now, hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to go ahead and crank it. Alright, I cranked it over uh, three times and it looked like the light uh, indeed was lighting. So we have uh, control, we have both our powers, so now uh, this last pin left is what goes to uh, the S-terminal on the starter. So we can go ahead and jump these, so we're going to be jumping 30, make sure I say it right, 30 and 87 will be what we're jumping. So let's do this one-handed. And I'm jumping it. Oh, hold on. I'm jumping it with a fused uh, jumper. That's important. Nothing. So with nothing happening, now we know that uh, we don't have an issue with from the fuse box to the ignition switch. It's not a control issue. The issue must be from this fuse box to the starter. 
So through the passenger wheel well, uh, you can get to the top of the starter. So we should be able to check on this right here. And that'll give us our power. So that, that big one right here, that's our power from the battery. So that should be nice and bright. So we got power, excellent. Now this wire here, that's our S terminal, or our power signal that's coming off of the, um, let me focus there. So that's coming off of that relay uh, up above. And then this will send a power to um, its own little solenoid, the starter solenoid, and it almost acts just like another relay. So this power will match a ground, turn a switch on inside, and that takes this positive and that negative over there and creates a path uh, through the motor. All right, so what we need to find out is, are we indeed getting power going to this uh, S-terminal? Well, wouldn't you figure I went to uh, hook everything up and go to crank it to see if we got that uh, signal on the S-terminal and it fired up? So, that's a bummer, but either way, um, that is what you would want to check to see if you're getting uh, a signal or power going to that S terminal. If you have this power here, nice and bright, and you have power going to the S terminal, then most likely the solenoid is bad. I wish it would not start, but it's starting at the moment. So, so that was an unfortunate ending. Um, I was hoping I could show you that we were getting power on that S terminal and it's still not cranking over. But um, why did I use the approach that I used? Well, the short answer is because that fuse box was ridiculously accessible. It was just right there. So you had uh, from that relay, the whole circuit of the fuse box to the um, ignition switch. And then you had the whole circuit from the fuse box to the starter. So it pretty much split that starter circuit in half right there so i was able to test what i needed it only took a few minutes uh, anyway to do all the checks that i did check right there we ended up at the starter uh, eventually but it could have went in the other direction it could have been an ignition switch or some uh, wiring in between all right well thanks for watching uh, like subscribe see you on the next one